The world has changed drastically over the past few years, and so have we. Now our entire lives are digital, from social media to even the money we spend. However, this transition has always brought us to a dilemma. Is convenience really worth the security risks that come with being always online? Well, it's not like we can pull everything back now, but thanks to this new tech, we won't have to either. First up, the dawn of a new internet. Back in the day, when anyone mentioned the word quantum, it always felt like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Over the past few years, though, that fiction has started to turn into reality. We've seen tons of advances in the world of quantum computing, and in some cases, are even replacing our old-fashioned computer methods with the new tech. Now, quantum computers are cool and everything, but what if we told you there's something even cooler on the horizon? Enter the quantum internet. Sounds like something taken straight out of a Matrix movie, right? Well, let us tell you that it's real and it is here. In a nutshell, the quantum internet is pretty much like the normal internet, but rather than sending data normally with traditional computers, it uses quantum devices and their strange principles instead. So it essentially encodes data in a quantum realm using qubits, which, if you're into this stuff, are obviously produced in quantum computers. This would allow us to transfer and process data over a network in a way that is simply not possible over the traditional web. So what's so different about quantum internet? Now, if you're familiar with with qubits, you'd know that these little quantum particles exhibit strange behavior and have different and somewhat random quantum states when observed. So when we shoot these little dudes between quantum devices, we're harnessing this phenomenon. The best part about this, though, is the fact that unlike a traditional network where data is sent through cables, the quantum internet operates wirelessly. And we're not talking about Wi-Fi, which still uses radio waves. We mean a complete lack of physical connection. It sounds like magic. Magic. But the thing is that calling it magic wouldn't be far from the truth. You see, our current internet uses something called bit transfer data. This bit follows a binary rule and can either be in a one or zero state. So when we combine a lot of these bits, they can form a message that your computer can read. This is a super accurate way of sending and receiving data. But a caveat with this is that a bit can never be anything other than a zero or a one, just like a switch can only be on or off. Now this is viable for most forms of data transmissions, but when there are complex algorithms at play, this traditional method can fall apart. Qubits, on the other hand, are superimposed and can exist in both zero and one states at the same time. This is called their quantum state and only exists in that realm. So, when these qubits are observed, they come out of their dual state to become either a zero or one. And this, while it may sound like utter sorcery, allows us to process complex data at a faster rate. Got that? Me neither. How does quantum internet improve security? Now that we've kind of wrapped our heads around how quantum computing works, let's get into the nitty gritty details. The internet that we have today is nothing but a bunch of computers around the world connected via wires. And while it has served us well thus far and has kind of changed the trajectory of humanity, it still has a ton of flaws. For instance, most of our data today is protected by giving the sender and recipient a shared key and then encrypting the message with that key. You can think of it as jumbling up the words and sending them to someone with an instruction manual on how to unjumble them. Now, this method might seem pretty hard for any intruders to crack, but it's not fully secure. Even with the most robust encryption methods, we still see hackers tap in and steal data regularly. In the case of quantum internet, hackers won't even have a route to tap into. This is because, unlike a traditional network, the data on quantum networks is encrypted using photons. Called quantum quantum cryptography, this method turns the key into photons that are shared between the two parties. And if any unauthorized person tries to take a look at these photons, they get changed or destroyed. So, in a way, this makes data on the quantum internet unhackable. But there's more to it than just this. But quantum internet doesn't need any physical connection. Since this tech is still in its infancy, we haven't quite figured out the best way to utilize it. Quantum entanglement is another buzzword used in sci-fi movies, but we might be close closer to actually implementing it in real life than we realize. In simple words, quantum entanglement means that two particles in different physical locations are tied together by their states. So, if one qubit is revealed to show one state, then the second entangled particle will also have the same state without us having to observe it. Now, this sounds like some science mumbo jumbo, but the gist of it is that we can transfer quantum data between two points without ever having to establish physical contact. 
In fact, this has already been replicated at a large scale. A Chinese team of scientists has managed to send an entangled pair of photos through fiber optic cables while keeping the data intact. And if that wasn't impressive enough, hear this out. This was not done over a distance of a few meters, but was done through a 2,000 kilometer circuit connecting Beijing and Shanghai. So, we already have proof of it working over long distances. Next, quantum particles are difficult to transport. There are still some caveats to this new tech though. We know that we're able to replicate this and transfer data over massive distances. However, while it may be possible to do this in a controlled environment, actually adapting it to our current infrastructure is almost impossible. You see, entangled particles are difficult to produce and even more difficult to transport across vast distances. And even though we could use quantum repeaters to allow for a better transmission, the actual costs for that will far outweigh the benefit that we gain from it. With that said, this is a very specialized tech like quantum computing and probably won't be useful for the general population anyway. The real use case for this tech is to allow scientists to run complex quantum calculations without having powerful computers on site. Not only that, but scientists could also link together multiple quantum computers to create a quantum supercomputer to surpass them all. So, by combining smaller quantum devices together, we could solve problems that just weren't computable before. We're talking about things like sensing experiments in astronomy, materials discovery, and life sciences. No, we won't be using quantum internet on our phones. Everything we've mentioned so far is pretty promising and, of course, sounds super cool. But the thing is that we probably won't be using the quantum internet in any form. Just like quantum computing is used for specialized calculations like weather modeling and other things, the internet is also limited to those use cases. So, if you were thinking that you might have a quantum internet Wi-Fi at your home that you'd use to browse through Instagram, you're in for a disappointment. The data that we have to send through for our use cases needs to be fully accurate and predictable. And if you've been paying any attention, quantum particles are neither accurate nor predictable. Think of it as a big Pandora's box of randomness. Imagine opening your Instagram DMs and seeing that your crush has confessed their love for you. And then a second later, that message vanishes and turns into some demonic hell chant. Wouldn't that be weird and creepy? Yeah, exactly. So you probably don't want to use quantum internet. All jokes aside though, most experts agree that we're still a few decades away from actually having a functioning quantum internet. And even when we get there, it will be used for some pretty complicated stuff. Currently, big tech companies like Google and IBM haven't achieved quantum supremacy, a concept that points towards quantum computers being better than traditional ones. In fact, they're not even close to achieving it. So, before we get to that point, quantum internet is our best bet. At the end of the day though, everything comes full circle, and us being able to compute these complex algorithms will result in better products and information for our daily usage. So, in a way, will still benefit from it. Let's just hope that it doesn't give birth to some super smart artificial intelligence that takes over the world. That's a wrap for this video. Are you excited about the prospect of quantum internet? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.